Hello, we are recording our service for Sunday, well, let's see, what is it? Anyway, uh, the second, I think, of what, May. Um, we're doing the service for Easter service, uh, Easter 5, the fifth week of Easter. And we will begin with God loved the world so that he gave him 571. God loved the world so that he gave his only Son, the lost, to save, that all who would in him believe should everlasting life receive. Christ Jesus is the ground of faith, who was made flesh and suffered death, all then who trust in him alone are built on this chief cornerstone. God would not have the sinner die. His Son with saving grace is nigh. His Spirit in the Word declares how we in Christ are heaven's heirs. Be of good cheer, for God's own Son forgives all sins which you have done, and justified by Jesus' blood, your baptism grants the highest good. If you are sick, if death is near, this truth your troubled heart can cheer. Christ Jesus saves your soul from death. That is the firmest ground of faith. Glory to God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three in one. To you, O blessed Trinity, be praised now and eternally. We are using service setting 5, found on page 213. We will begin with confession and absolution. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord who has begun this good work in us bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. We're going to continue with our psalm for today, which is Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his mighty deeds. 
Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with sounding cymbals. Praise him with loud clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We continue by singing hymn 944. Actually, we're going to continue by singing Love Divine, All Love Excelling, hymn 700, verses 1 and 2. One more page. Love divine, all loves excelling, joy of man to it come down. Fix in us thy humble dwelling, all thy faithful mercies crown. Jesus, thou art all compassion, pure, unbounded love thou art. Visit us with thy salvation, enter every trembling heart. Breathe, oh, breathe thy loving spirit into every troubled breast. Let us all in thee inherit. Let us find thy promised rest. Take away the love of sinning, Alpha and Omega be, and of faith as its beginning, set our hearts at liberty. Our collect for today, let us pray. O God, you make the minds of your faithful to be of one will. Grant that we may love what you have commanded and desire what you promise, that among the many changes of this world, our hearts may be fixed where true joys are found. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading for today comes from Acts chapter 8. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, Rise and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert place. And he rose and went. And there was an Ethiopian, a eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who was in charge of all her treasure. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning seated in his chariot, and he was reading the prophet Isaiah. And the spirit said to Philip, Go over and join this chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading Isaiah, the prophet, and asked, Do you understand what you are reading? And he said, How can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this, like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he opens not his mouth. In his humiliation justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. And the eunuch said to Philip, About whom, I ask you, does the prophet say this? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth, and beginning with this scripture, he told him the good news about Jesus. And as they were going along the road, they came to some water. 
And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What prevents me from being baptized? And he commanded the chariot to stop. And they both went down into the water, Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord carried Philip away, and the eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he passed through, he preached the gospel to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle is from 1 John chapter 4, and while I have been preaching on the psalm today, we're going to preach on this epistle, since the psalm is basically a doxology. We've done that recently. So we're going to preach on the epistle 1 John 4. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard was coming and now is in the world already. Little children, you are from God and have overcome them. For he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are from the world, therefore they speak from the world. And the world listens to them. We are from God. Whoever knows God listens to us. Whoever is not from God does not listen to us. By this, we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God. And whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only Son into the world so that he might live through him. And this is love. Not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to love one another. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our hymn of the day is hymn 544. O love, how deep, how broad, how wide, if I'm remembering it right. Yes, how broad, how high. Hymn 544, verses 1, 5, 6, and 7. O oh, love, how deep, how broad, how high, beyond all thought and fantasy, that God, the Son of God, should take our mortal form for mortal's sake. For us by wickedness betrayed, for us in crown of thorns arrayed, he bore the shameful cross and death. For us he gave his dying breath. For us he rose from death again. For us he went on high to reign. For us he spent, he sent his spirit here to guide, to strengthen, and to cheer. All glory to our Lord and God for love so deep, so high, so broad. The Trinity, whom we adore forever and forevermore. 
The Holy Gospel for this, the fifth Sunday of Easter, comes from John chapter 15. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch of mine that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away, like a branch, and withers. And the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, <clears throat> maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We're going to continue with our sermon. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In this passage, John, the presbyter, the one of the apostles who lived the longest, who perhaps lived close to 100, who died not a martyr's death, but died of old age, blind, perhaps, but nevertheless of old age, John, who was given the task of watching over Mary for Jesus when Jesus was on the cross and about to give up his spirit, that John speaks to the church. But he speaks to us as little children, as a father who is teaching those whom he loves, teaching us how to love one another, how to reflect the love of Christ in our lives in and amongst the church and the people of God, so that the church and the people of God might share that love and act in a manner which is consonant with the way that Jesus taught, consonant with the way that Jesus lived, consonant with the values that God had set from time immemorial in the lives of his people. God had a design for our lives a design which is alive and well and unchanging today. He started out with Adam and Eve. He gave to them authority and tasks that they were to accomplish, vocations. He placed them in a situation where they would succeed in those vocations. And he made them man and wife so that not only would they serve one another and serve God, would they fulfill those daily vocations that they had of caring for the plants and caring for the animals, caring for the world around them, but so that they would join together one flesh and have children. Many, many children, Cain and Abel and Seth and many, many others who would marry, who would gain this same set of tasks 
who would be there to expand and cover the entire earth. Go forth and multiply the early command of God. It was in living out this life that they became a fellowship of believers in God, of those who were God's children, and that they accomplished the tasks God had placed for them. And, uh, and they did the vocations by showing love to one another that God had set. John is telling us in the church that the design and the plan, the implementation of God's command is still alive today. That Christ came as the fulfillment of that plan, demonstrating God's good plan. Now, Christ did not marry. He had a mother marry, but he did not marry. Christ did not have children, but Christ had the disciples. He had his followers. He had those whom he loved in this life, who were to him his mother and brothers and sisters, his children, those that he showed the love of God to, those that he lived and dwelled with, those that he taught and shared meals with and formed a fellowship. And those who walked with him and talked with him, who watched as he acted, came to learn who Jesus was and learn who the Father was in the Father's plan, learn the image of God by the actions and the love of Jesus in their life. Christ set up the church based upon his life, based upon his actions of love. And he set up the 12 disciples, who later became 11 of the apostles, and then they added another to their number, and then God added Saul, who became Paul, to their number, so 13 apostles, as witnesses of what Christ did, witnesses of his love, witnesses of his action, witnesses of how God took his original design of vocation and family and serving one another, how God accomplished that design in the life of Christ when he made a family, when he lived his vocation, when he went to the cross and he died for us, serving us ultimately, and then rose so that there might be new life, more children. And God gave that design an example to the church. This is the witness of the apostles and certainly the witness of John. That the church should live out the love of Christ in our lives. And that the things of God which he gave are good. They are the basic design that we should follow. And we can know the truths of God in this. Do the truth, do the people who speak speak of what Christ did? And do they speak of truths which come out of the life of Christ? Or do they speak counter to what Christ did? And do they speak truths that are counter to the life of Christ? And the life of Christ is more than the gospel stories. John in his gospel says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now what was that Word? Well, it is Jesus Christ. When we speak to Scripture, we say, This is the Word of God. We are saying that Christ is incarnate. He was incarnate in the flesh, but he is also incarnate in these words and ideas which come to us. And so all that the Bible teaches us, all that the Bible instructs us and guides us, that is also the loving life of Christ, demonstrated to us, guiding us in our living so that we might be brothers and sisters together in fellowship. And those who deny the word, the holy scripture of God, deny Jesus. They are not loving. They are not living and they are not teaching in a way that pleases God and a way which we should follow. John here warns about those people. He calls them antichrists. The antichrist is Satan. 
who ultimately wants to twist the word of God in such a way that it goes from a loving action where we demonstrate to God that we love him and we serve one another, who wants to twist the word of God so that we look to ourselves and we're selfish in what we do, that we turn our back upon God and we decide what is right and wrong. You know, the devil tried to do that in the temptation of Jesus, using even the words of scripture to tempt Jesus not to follow God's plan and God's design, to seek out his own good and not die. But Jesus turned him back by going, by testing the spirits, by looking at what the devil said, putting it into the context of the whole of scripture, and then taking scripture, the word, the loving action of Christ, and showing how in scripture, what the devil said was wrong, and what God said in God's plan is right. Well, antichrists, little a, come today. And they claim they're coming from Jesus, or from the Father, or from the Holy Spirit, or from Allah, or give your, you know, your divinity. They claim they're coming from knowledge of the world that's set in place from the very beginning, or from science, which is a discovery of the reality around us. And they claim that they're coming in love to give us better ways to live, better existences, better ways to be a society. But then they speak other than Christ, when they speak against Christ, when they speak in a way which makes Christ's words and actions unloving, which makes scripture unloving, then they're speaking against God and they are antichrists. Claiming the position of Savior, claiming the position of Lord by God's right, but in actuality serving a different master, the master Satan. Let's give an example. People sometimes say all love is love. And if you have homosexual love, it is equal to the love presented in scripture of a married couple. That goes against the word of God. In many different places, God says that that is an abomination. But that is not true love. We know that it goes against the original design where you have a man and a woman and the two become one flesh and they serve one another. Since they are different and yet complementarian, they are made by God for that purpose, to serve one another in marriage, which includes, and only in marriage, includes that sexual relationship. And so it is an abomination when people do polyamory, homosexuality, when they live outside the bonds of marriage as if they are married, not having given that oath to one another that they will not depart from each other until death comes, not having given that oath before God that they will serve according to his plan in loving kindness to one another. And so if the world teaches that there is a better or a different way to live in a married state or to live as a married person only should live, then the world is wrong. It's false. It goes against the plan of God. And the world is not in fellowship with Christianity. It is not walking as children of God. Or let's take another one. The elderly and the very young, the most helpless in our society. Scripture says, care for them. He says that you must have faith like a child. He says that when you do this to the least of these, my brethren, you do it unto me. Time and time again, Scripture says, care for the widow and the needy. It tells us to honor our parents. If we look in the wisdom text, it speaks of caring for the elderly, caring for our parents in their later years. And yet society might say, well, sometimes the very young, they get in the way. And they're going to suffer anyway. If, if you don't have a good life, they're not going to have a good life. And maybe they have physical disabilities or mental disabilities. You know, if you kill them before they come out of the womb, that would be better for them. Certainly better for you. 
because they'll interrupt your happiness and your opportunities. For the elderly, you know, they've had a good life. They, they tax our systems. They are the ones who cause our health cares to shoot way up. They should have prepared for their old age when they were younger. If they didn't do it, it's their own fault. And they get in the way. Maybe it's better that, first of all, we don't have to worry about them. We stick them off in some gross place where they can rot and die. What would be even better is if we just ended their life now. They've done enough. They don't really have any purpose yet, and they don't want to live either. So, so let's kill them off. These are ideas of society which go completely against the love of Christ. The love of Christ where he said, let the little children come to me, for such is the kingdom. The love of Christ where he made sure that Mary, his mother, as he was dying on the cross, had a son who would care to her, for her into and beyond her old age. The love of Christ where when Peter came to him and his mother-in-law lay dying, he went with Peter and he brought his mother-in-law back to health. That Christ who honors those who are elderly, who cherishes the unborn, goes against completely these ideas of the world. Or perhaps we could look at gender and sex, male and female. In the beginning, God created them, male and female. God put us into the bodies that we have. He built from the very beginning. In the womb, he knit us together. So we are male, if he wanted us to be male, as in my case. We're female, if he wanted us to be female, as in my wife's case. And we don't change that. It is what it is. And when society turns its, uh, a blind eye to this definite, obvious reality, we head in a dangerous direction. I could go on. If it was there a Bible study, I could spend an hour on this, talking about ideas of the world, which go against the ideas of God. The idea that, that sometimes people serve one another. Jesus said, a new commandment I give unto you. Or that we love our enemy. Or that we should be fruitful and multiply, and that children are a blessing. Or that if a man burns, he should get married. And you can go on and on and on. That there are good things in education, and there are things you should not seek out and be educated in, because they're bad and corrupting. And you should seek out the things which are light and of God because they are good and they teach us about the love of Christ. Christ has given us his word and his life as examples of what love is. And in his word and his life, we are guided in how we live in the world in fellowship with one another so that we can be brothers and sisters to Jesus and brothers and sisters to each other. And that's the point John is making. God is love. And when we follow in the image of God, we are love. And when we are love, it is better. It is better not only because our relationship with God is better, but our relationship with each other is better. And so we seek out the things which are God. We test the spirits we find those that are good, and that's where we come with our children, with our families, with our mothers and fathers and grandfathers and grandmothers together to learn about love and to learn how to live out that vocation of love. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to continue this time with prayer. Let us pray for the whole people of God and for all people according to their needs. I am using the prayer found on page 215. Friends in Christ, I urge you all to lift up your hearts to God and pray with me as Christ our Lord has taught us and freely promised to hear us. God, our Father in heaven, look with mercy on us, your needy children on earth, and grant us grace that your holy name be hallowed by us and all the world through the pure and true teaching of your word, 
and the fervent love shown forth in our lives. Graciously turn from us all false doctrine and evil living, whereby your precious name is blasphemed and profaned. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May your kingdom come to us and expand. Bring all transgressors and those who are blinded and bound in the devil's kingdom to know Jesus Christ, your Son, by faith, that the number of Christians may be increased. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Strengthen us by your Spirit, according to your will, both in life and in death, in the midst of both good and evil things, that our own wills may be crucified daily and sacrificed to your good and gracious will. Into your merciful hands, Lord, we commend Irma and Joe, Dick, Gary, Margie, Marcel, Richard, and Abby. And Lord, we pray for Helen and Rick, John, Bev, Marie, Steve, Bev, Barb, Sharon, Lois, and Marvin. And we pray for all those affected by riots and violence, disease and war. We pray for all who are in need, praying for them at all times. Thy will be done. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant us our daily bread. Preserve us from greed and selfish cares and help us trust in you to provide for all our needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Forgive us our sins as we also forgive those who sin against us so that our hearts may be at peace and may rejoice in a good conscience before you, and that no sin may ever frighten or alarm us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lead us not into temptation, O Lord, but help us by your Spirit to subdue our flesh, to turn from the world and its ways, and to overcome the devil with all his wiles. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And lastly, O Heavenly Father, Deliver us from all evil of both body and soul, now and forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We trust, O Lord, in your great mercy to hear and answer us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We will continue with our hymn of thanks, which is the doxology, found on page 805. Praise God from whom all blessings Low, praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him, above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Let us join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. We will continue with hymn 697, Awake, O Sleeper, Rise from Death. Awake, O sleeper, rise from death, and Christ shall give you light. So learn his love, its length and breadth, its fullness, depth, and height. To us on earth he came to bring from sin and fear release, to give the Spirit's unity the very bond of peace. Then walk in love as Christ has loved, who died that he might save. 
with kind and gentle hearts forgive as God in Christ forgave. For us Christ lived, for us he died, and conquered in the strife. Awake, arise, go forth in faith, and Christ shall give you life. Go in the peace of the Lord, and go in his love. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia.